This is probably the closest thing I've ever seen to winter and actually going fishing in Florida. It's like 55, cold. Big cold front came through. Um, it's cold. That's, that's all I can really say is it's cold. I don't know what to expect. He says we're going strictly artificials today. We'll see how that plays out. See if that's how it ends up. But uh, I'm gonna get ready for this run and bundle up a little bit more and at least the sun's out. That's a good thing. We're after the front, so high pressure setting in. Get a little bit more bluebird skies and hopefully warm it up, lay the winds down. But uh, it was pretty chilly on the ride down here. I'd say it was like 44, 45 on the ride up here or down here. So bundle up and let's get running. So we made it to the first spot. The wind is howling out the north. We're gonna fish a few spots while the water's still high right now. It hasn't really fallen out yet and uh, see what we can do, but it's supposed to fall out hard. We got a north, it's not a negative tide, but uh, like Austin was telling me with this northeast wind, he expects it to kind of go negative um, with the heavy, heavy northeast wind. It's gotta be feeling 15, 20, 25, somewhere in that range. So we're fishing downwind down this bank. We're throwing some lures at them on some reaper rods. And we're gonna see what happens. He says a lot of trees in the water. We're gonna throw around these trees and uh, let's see what we get. Let's see how this goes. I'm, uh, it's one of those days where you're kinda gonna know quick in the next 30 minutes to an hour whether you're gonna grind or whether you're gonna smoke the fish. What you got there? Speckle oh, trout? Monsters, oh, finally got a fish buddy. on. Finally got a fish on. Monsters. All right, so you just got a first speckle trout. We're on our second spot. Like I told y'all, after about 30 minutes, we know it's gonna be tough or not. It's been tough. That's the first bite. A little 12, 13 inch speck. Finally seeing some bait though and some uh, drum or sheephead underneath the boat. So uh, we're gonna keep chugging away at it, but it's gonna be one of them grind days. But all it takes is one school to change that, so. Going back to casting. Foul hooked in this town? It looks like, but it's a little better, better one. A little better speckled trout. We're still in the specs. Take what we can get. Let's we'll take any bite we can get today, buddy. Well, that's a little better one. Smoking them. The white little bellies. Some trout. Oh my gosh. Nothing but monsters today, buddy. Little ones. Little, but little. it's a bite. It's a bite. We've been fighting just for a bite for a while. Right. We talked about it, man. Number three or four. We can get today. And the stream, he'd be a good one. <laughs> so Austin's got number four on. I haven't caught one yet. And uh, he says it's the jig head. I think he's just being nice, but we're going to go with this Ned head jig head he's got. Let him take this one off and show it to y'all. So y'all can see what this thing is. Old trusty. Show him how it works. Let this guy go. Let that guy go. Show him how this jig head works. All right, so it's a stand-up style jig head. It's a same kind of jig head that's used all the time up north for small mouth or whatever. Real flat surface, so when you're jigging it on the bottom, when it sits on the bottom, it actually sits straight up like that. And you want to try to use some kind of flotation, you know, some plastic's got a lot of flotation to it. This is a Z-Man. Tail floats up, so when it hits that bottom, it sits there and it just wiggles like that with the water. And the fish come down, nose down on it and grab it. It's a real subtle, you know, finesse style approach, but it works really well out here when it's really cold like this and the fish aren't active. Let's see if we can catch one. You know when you get that bite, that thump, thump, there he is. <laughs> right when you said them birds were working over top of them. Definitely fun catching one of the fish. Oh man, they just stomp it, don't they? Nice. Beautiful 
fish. Hammer job, right there. Good job, buddy. So he said there was some birds up there. Probably where there would be a couple fish. And as soon as it hit the water, I jigged it twice. And he smoked it. He's cold. Yeah, he hit like a cold redfish. He yeah, just had boom, boom, he, just sat there. Let me switch it. No pull and drag, no nothing. Handled a few of these in my day. I bet you have. You want to pack and go anywhere. Perfect redfish. I'll take that one all day. Worked hard for that one. A couple hundred cast. But uh, maybe a couple more in that cove. We'll see. Very Very nice. lucky. We got our fun with this one. Let's see if there's any more in that hole. The water's not that cold. He's ready to go. <laughs> you think it's a you think it's a snook? It's a snook, man. Yeah, a snook, you think? Possibly a snook. Oh yeah. Since you can't get hit a grand slam on a day like today. <laughs> we'll take what we can get. We go from no bites for the first two hours to three species in less than 20 minutes. He's cold. He says, put me back. Yeah, it's not something you see every day on the cold front. No, they're definitely not going to want to eat very well. Take a week and get it, man. Pretty little guy. Thank you, buddy. Sorry it wasn't a real shrimp. Little snook? Hey, the snook are on this thing. It's one thing I didn't think we'd catch today would be snook. I didn't, I didn't, I figured we'd go on red fishing and trout fishing, but I didn't think. We'd be going snook fishing. Talk about a light bite, too. Setting them on the bottom and let them just pick them up. Literally, he just picked it up. Slowest pickup you'd see. I'll let him go quick, because little guy, he don't even want to hang with us. Got another one on. It's like a little sun to come out. Warming up action, man. I don't blame them. Man, you definitely can't complain about this day. Ooh. ooh. Oh, 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 oh. He's serious. Yeah, he's got a little pep in his step. A little go go juice. He likes the AC being on today. Go go juice. Going again underneath the boat. Yeah, we take him. Flip him in there. Thank you, sir. Very respectable. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at that at all. Stop it. Yeah, they're feisty. Stop it. I tell you, it's almost like the sun's coming out, all these fish are getting a little more active. I don't blame them. All right, so as you see, that's probably our third or fourth snook. So we started off with some trout, caught a nice redfish. Now we're on a snook. So as this sun's coming out and it's getting the middle part of the day, I say it all the time, you know, the middle part, when you get in these cold fronts, that's why we didn't get up early today. We didn't start at sunrise. Then we left out about 8.30. When you get into the middle, the winter time, the middle part of the day when the sun's the highest, your best. That 10 to two window, that nine to three, and that range is gonna be where your bite's gonna happen, and it is, what time is it? 11.40. 11.40, how you like that? Right at noon when the sun's the highest, sun's out, fish is turning on, and I'm excited. We worked hard this morning, we getting on some fish. All right, so we're gonna, since Austin decided to re-rig, he's getting put on the spot, and uh, we're gonna re-rig with him on camera, kind of show you what he's doing and how these things are set up, because. He's got them rigged right, that's for sure. All those gears always rigged right. All right, so yeah, we're gonna retire our leader real quick, catching a couple snook and freighting me up. We're using a real light leader since it's, like I said, these fish are very, very finicky this morning. We're tying a 20 pound fluorocarbon on. And we're gonna tie what's called an FG knot. Essentially, we're tying a Chinese finger trap. And there's a couple different ways to tie it. This is just the way I do. But every turn, I'm going one over, one under. I'm cinching it back towards my hand. And what that does is, is it tightens up on my tag end, or on my uh, my leader line here. And I'm going to do it about 21, 22 times. It's not a fast knot. Some guys tie it pretty quick. 
But uh, the purpose of this knot is to keep you from tying a knot with your leader material, which allows you to bring the knot itself through the guides of the rod so you can run a longer leader and uh, which helps you when our, you know, your water visibility is super clear like it is today. Our water has been really clear without having any rain. So we'll wrap that about 20, 21 times. And the cool part about this knot is the finishing touch. We call what's called a risotto twist. So I'm gonna tie it, essentially run this tag in along the main part of my line here. I'm gonna wrap it like this, almost tie like I'm gonna get ready to tie a uni knot. I'm gonna take my tag in from my braid and I'll run it through this seven to eight times. And what this is going to do is it's going to tie a knot at the top of my twists so that they don't come unraveled. All right, so now what I do is I just wrap that six, seven times. I'm going to untie the knot on top of my twists, just like this. And as I do, I'm kind of letting them cinch down, pulling down with my finger. When I get to the end, I take my tag in from my braid. I'm gonna pull it tight. And I have a knot pushed right on top of my, my loops there so it won't come undone. So when I pull my tag or my braid and my mono material here, everything cinches down real tight. And it cinches down right on top of itself. It won't come undone. You wanna make sure you pull your tag in, of course, to keep everything tight. Like pull your tag in on your knot so it comes real tight on top. And then when you cut it, cut everything real close. And then you have a knot that goes right through your, right That's through your ridiculous. guides, real smooth. That is the way to do it. And it's 100% uh, line strength, so I mean you're not gonna break it. And then for our our net heads, I tie a loop knot. Some guys like to just tie you know, a regular uni knot or a polymer. I tie a loop knot just to give that jig head a little bit more freedom. This yeah, it allows it to stand up a little better. Right, exactly. So I do, uh, as I call it a poly knot, I do an overhand knot. I go through the eye of my jig head. And I go back under and through my overhand knot. I pull that down just just a little bit, and that's what's going to determine the, uh, the size of my loop. I want to be about the size of a pencil. I'm gonna tag my, take my tag in around my main line once, go right back through the middle, and pull it tight. Loop knot. Just like that. I'm gonna grab a, another net head bait here. Some Z-Mans. A little Z-Man plastic action. It's so cold. So this is the regular TRD from Z-Man. It's about a five inch bait. What I like to do is cut it down just a little bit. Yeah, we're not catching the uh, 36 inch snook today. So. Yeah, we're not catching monsters. Well, it's not even so much that. It's just these baits are so flexible is that when you're jigging and it's too long, it'll actually hook itself. So oh, there you go. I'm just gonna cut it down just a little bit here. Take your jig head. This is the tricky part with these Z-Man baits is they're so pliable and stretchy. You gotta run that hook right through the middle. Take your time with it because it makes a difference. Oh, you'll stick your finger really easy. Yeah, though, yeah. Like a rubber band. Push it on those keepers real tight. Interesting material. The only one still doing that stuff in the saltwater game I've ever seen. Here you go. Ready to go. Redfish, back on the redfish. You got the red Finally. Wow. Ain't as big as yours. And that's a good eating one though right there. He's a good eating one. He's, uh -huh. he's not legal though this day. Nah. But that's a good eating one right there. Oh. Well, he didn't want me to touch him. Yum. Ain't that net head though. Thumped it too, let me tell you. That was the best bite I've had all day on that. Spit it. What was Spit it? it. Snuck, man. Oh, another snook. Smoked it, swam right at me. Threw it at me too. Disrespect. We're getting 
it bites. My old theory of 10 and 2 played right. <laughs> 10 and 2. Man, when you're in the wintertime, in the middle of that sun gets up the highest, them fish bite the best. Well, nobody wants to get out of bed early when it's cold out. Come on. Yeah. And nobody wants to get out the deep. They want to get up on the flats when it warms up. You'll be leaving here in an hour or two. All right, so we made it back to the dock. We just finished up. We ended on uh, Austin having that fish come off. But uh, sometimes that's how it goes. We hit two more spots, nothing there. And uh, we grinded hard this morning and caught some fish, middle of the day. So if there's anything you got out of this episode, when it's winter time, fish the middle of the day for the most part. Water didn't fall out as much as we thought, but the fish just only got active for a little while. So make sure y'all check out Austin's charters. What's the charter? Chasing Action Charters. ChasingActionCharters.com. Check them out if you're in a Bow Grand. Tarpon season's right around the corner. We'll both be down here tarpon fishing. We were just talking about it. It's gonna be here before you know it. So reach out to them if y'all want a book. And if you want to do some redfish, snook fishing, and uh, trout fishing, this is one of the best places I've found on the West Coast. Check them out. Like and subscribe to the channel. Be back next week.